companies be allowed to prescribe cannabis. And we're chatting about this today because people from across the country protested um, to get better access to medicinal cannabis. This was outside the Dáil just yesterday. They want an overhaul of the laws here in Ireland. And Pam is with me on the line today. Pam, you were at the, um, the event, the rally that took place. Why do you think it should be easier for people to, um, to access medicinal cannabis? Andrea, I'll just uh, correct you there first. We were actually outside the Department of Health yesterday and it was a demonstration um, of and people coming together to inform, educate and try and get some regulation in with this. At the moment, the um, access programme is so, so limited. It's, it's not fit for purpose, not at all. Um, to get a consultant in Ireland, you have to wait years. Everybody can go and see their GP. GPs know their patients better. We're a consultant. It was by the time you do get to see them, you're years waiting. People are suffering in all that time. So we have a program that's literally been open for years that so few people have been able to access. So it's, it's not fit for purpose at all. Like well, my son has a license. Yeah. D- d- tell us about what I wanted to ask you. Tell us about your own experience, Pam. So Ryan has a medicinal cannabis license since 2019. Now, I've had to pay for that month and month, anything up to a thousand and eighty euro a month since 2019. I can't get reimbursed under the private care, primary care reimbursement with HSA because it doesn't fit into a certain criteria. Ryan never will. Ryan has a very rare genetic form of cancer. So he will never fit into all of these tick box exercises that people want him to do. He won't. So we got a ministerial license for him. We've been importing since 2019, but he should be on the Medical Cannabis Access Programme. It's what it's set up for. You know, it, it says it in its name, Medical Cannabis Access Programme. He is an Irish citizen. He should have it. We shouldn't have to be importing from Holland. Like the Department of Health has to employ a courier service to deliver us medicines once we've paid for them to our home. Where so he just, can't just go to, into a chemist. yeah, just to clarify that, Pam, just that we we have a full understanding of it. Ryan has the ministerial order to import um, the certain amount of cannabis that you pay for it. As you mentioned, it's over a thousand euro, but he yes. doesn't qualify under the medical cannabis access pro- program here in Ireland. He doesn't fit that criteria of that program that was established. Yeah, exactly. Unless he unless he takes chemo. And if he takes chemo and becomes nauseous from from receiving chemotherapy, then they'll allow him on the medical cannabis access program. But to receive chemo, you are killing off the receptors within your body. So, you know, that that's you know, again they're making us having to go to other choices first. Why can't medical cannabis, especially for the likes of Ryan, where it's shown that it's working, he hasn't spent a day in hospital since 2019. You know, it's working for him. So if it's working for him, why is he not allowed on the programme? And do you, do you, did you ever get, you know, an explanation for that from no, anybody I in the can't. Department of no. Health? Or? Uh, no, the Department of Health are amazing. The HSC are a separate entity. And this is what a lot of people don't get. They're different entities. So, you, you know, you don't have the right hand speaking to the left hand at all at any stage. So this is what we're trying to do with the medical cannabis access program it's up for a review this year so while the review is happening this is why we're going so public and we're really pushing a campaign a what about us campaign so to get the MCAP program widened so it will include include chronic pain it will include maybe license holders rather than being consultant led let it be GP led you know they these things can easily happen if they just sit down with us as patients as family members, carers, you know, a specialist in the field, international specialist, and sit down around the table and argue out some very, very simple points that would make a mo- such a difference to the quality of life for so many people in Ireland, for so many people. Are people surprised, Pam, when they find out that, you know, you were able to get Orion qualifies for a ministerial order to uh, to import cannabis to oh, treat yes. his condition? But yet he... Oh, he yes. so, so there's obviously a strict parameter around not everybody can get the ministerial order, but then no, you have a separate can't. qualifying criteria to meet the, the medical cannabis access programme. So they're two entirely yes. separate things, basically. 
two, two completely separate things, and they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. You know, the, the Minister for Health has said that Ryan can have this, but yet the HSC are saying that no, he can't be on part of the programme. Even though his consultant, both consultants and his GP, have asked for Ryan to be included in medical cannabis access programme, which means that he would receive his medicine at either the medical card cost, which is one euro fifty, or the primary care beam or the drug payment scheme, which is capped at eighty euro a month. But it's not and even about the, the the money at the minute, Pam, because it's actually been able to qualify for us. You know, I don't I know. have any money left to keep going at a thousand a month. I don't th- so it. it's a thousand a month. That's, a thousand yeah. eighty euro a month as well as prescription is. Um, tell us a little bit about Ryan. Um, Ryan is an amazing old man. He's amazing. He really is. What age is he? He has, he's 22. Yeah. Um, his uh, condition was misdiagnosed um, by an Irish hospital. I don't blame that hospital. Ryan's condition is so rare. They didn't know what they were looking at. So I don't blame them for it. What I do blame and who I do blame today is the state, the Irish government, the HSA and the Department of Health for not sitting down with us as a family and looking at Ryan as an individual, not as a cash cow, not as a number or a statistic or anything, but as a sick individual and looking to see what is the best treatment plan that we can come up to give this man the best quality of life. And we we so such a simple process to happen. But yet it's, it's you know, we're, we're, we're just constantly coming up against brick walls no matter where we turn. How many other people are in your position? Wow. I get contacted on a daily basis by so many people asking me to help them, asking me to guide them, asking me to help them, you know, to help them either get onto the programmes or how can, how can they trial cannabis, how can they do this? And how, and, but unfortunately, I'm focusing on Ryan at the moment. I don't have the mental head space um, to help other people and I so wish I could mm. but at the moment I don't. But for you but it I, doesn't sound like, I mean this isn't a conversation I take it Pam from, from talking to you in the past few minutes here today, it's, it's not a conversation around you know legalising cannabis, I mean this is this is about allowing your son, medicinal. allowing Ryan receive yes. what he's actually already legally allowed to import. Yes, yes yes where is the, the medical cannabis access programme at at the moment? Um was introduced last year, wasn't it? Mm, I know it came into operation last year. It came into operation, but it's but yeah, twenty nineteen, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh before that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um the first prescription was actually given out last year under that. Um Ryan's medicine uh, down October last year, um Stephen Donnelly signed and approved the exact same medicine that Ryan received from Vegocan, 22% THC cannabis floss, which is a, a bud, was included on the medical access program as one of the drugs that could be used. So the same medicine that Ryan is having to import and we're paying privately for is already being categorised as a okay. useful medicine on the medical cannabis access programme. Okay. Look, I, I know the point of the, um, the the protest or the demonstration, as you say, yesterday was to, uh, well, highlight all of this and, and you're looking for an overhaul um, of the system as to where it's at at the minute. Um, Pam, I, I just want to bring in maybe a couple of other listeners on this too. Lunchtime live at newstalk.com. That's the email address if you do want to get in touch with us. Uh, Pam, thanks a million though for sharing your story with us and for joining us here on Lunchtime Live today. Uh, 1800 453 106. You can call us on that number either. Uh, Bobby is with us too on the line today. Bobby Smith is a, um, a doctor, a consultant child and adolescent psychiatrist. Bobby, what's your view on this? Like, Do you think GP should be able to prescribe um, cannabis in, in, in you know medicinal cannabis in these cases. Um, I suppose in short, uh, no, Andrea. Uh, I don't think that would be a good idea. Um, the the great complexity of of the conversations around therapeutic uses for cannabis relate to the fact that I suppose it's not a medicine uh, in in the in the general use of that term. Um, 
we have the Health Products Regulatory Authority in Ireland, uh, and that's the authority that determines what is and what is not a medicine. And, and cannabis doesn't come anywhere near reaching the uh, the standards that we would apply to normal medicines. And this has been an issue across the world. So, so for me, I have a big problem with the term medical cannabis or, or medicinal cannabis. That it's a it's a misnomer. Um, some people do choose to use cannabis for therapeutic benefits. There are some chemicals within the cannabis plant that um, are promising in, in terms of their usefulness in, in terms of treating some specific conditions. Uh, but cannabis itself as a plant, um, you know, it, it doesn't meet the usual standards that you apply uh, for a medicine. And again, just to explain, you know, to, to the people listening to this, if you've been to a doctor in the last number of years and you've left with a prescription, you've taken that to a pharmacy, uh, I'm pretty sure there isn't a, a single person listening who left that pharmacy with a plant. Uh, we don't use plants as medicines in 2022. So it, it's, and I think that's what's posing some of the challenges then with the uh, access program as it operates um, because it's, it's, it, it, there's no, there's no regular frame of reference within medicines generally that 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 it can operate under. The, the, the idea, though, Bobby, and maybe, maybe you can just from a medical perspective explain this. The idea that you would be granted though a ministerial order and told you're allowed to to import um, medicinal cannabis, like as Pam described there, uh, you know, for for her son, for Ryan. And yet she doesn't qualify under the the uh, medical cannabis access program. I mean, does it not? Like, why is that? Why, why would you qualify for one and not the other? As I said, I suppose people are making this up as they go along, uh, Andrea, because it does fall outside all other regulatory systems. It doesn't fall under uh, medicine. So if I understand what, what Pam was describing in terms of a situation with Ryan, that the issue seems to be one really of reimbursement. Um, so that she has access to the treatment that she wants uh, for Ryan or that her, mm. Ryan's doctors want to be provided to him. It's an, it's an issue of reimbursement, and I would have thought there's, there should be solutions to that, but, um, you know, I, I can't explain that. But um, I, I do have a problem with the, this idea of, of GPs being allowed to prescribe cannabis because that's, I suppose, ultimately what happened in Canada and California and all those countries that have ultimately legalized cannabis. And whatever about sincere people like Pam and her desire to see the best treatment available for her son, um, there are certainly many individuals who are driving the, the so-called medical cannabis agenda whose real goal is is legalization, right. full legalization. Um, and the route to that is, is via... Um, getting free and easy access in the guise of medical cannabis where people go in, a bit of a nod and a wink at the few doctors who would cooperate with such a programme and then you leave with your... Yeah, well, uh, I don't question the bona fides in fairness to Pam. I mean, she, she made it very clear that, you absolutely. know, this was absolutely in relation to the treatment for, for her son, for, for Ryan. Um, but as it stands at the minute, though, Bobby, the, the access programme, like, it makes it possible. It's for a medical consultant, though. Is, is that right? They're the only people Correct. able to prescribe. Yes. And your point is that as a GP... You, you don't think that you and other colleagues um, down the line, if there ever were to be changes, you don't think that you guys should be doing it. Le- leave it to the leave it to the, the consultants that are dealing with this. Yeah, I suppose I'm an addiction specialist, uh, and cannabis there's no, in, no there's no addiction indication for for any cannabis based product. So most medical specialists won't have any role in this. There's there's only four or five very specific conditions that have been identified as having a potential value for use of cannabis-based products and specialists in those conditions can, as sort of a, as a last option treatment, have access to this uh, for patients. And the reason for that is because the evidence for effectiveness of cannabis for almost all conditions is really, really weak and non-existent in most cases. Okay, Bobby, uh, thanks a million, Dr. Bobby Smith, consultant, um, child and adolescent psychiatrist and addiction specialist for for joining us here in the program today. There's a couple of different um, experiences, I suppose, stories coming into us as well on the show. Amy is on the line. Amy, you suffer with endometriosis, is that right? I do. I suffer with endometriosis, adenomyosis and chronic pain as a result of both. And I'd just like to address there the five conditions that he, Bobby may have mentioned. 
there's unseen evidence to support far more. So I'd love to know where he's getting his research from. And I pray to God his family never, ever have to suffer the lack of access that we have and the stigma with GPs that us patients are facing at the moment. What is your story, Amy? My story is I was a hormonal guinea pig for 10 years, told that I just had bad periods, that it was I was unfortunate. And I didn't hear the word endometriosis until I was 21. By the time I was 26, I had three surgeries in Ireland and the third one ruined my life. I had to give up my job. I had to move two hours from my GP and hospitals because I couldn't afford rent anymore on disability allowance. And it absolutely destroyed my mental health. I was very suicidal for a very long time. And cannabis was the only thing that got me through the whole nightmare. I found a specialist in Romania who was able to deal with the acute condition. And I had to borrow 10,000 euro because my consultant refused me the referral to go to Romania. So that in itself was more traumatic. Mm. I you... did borrow the money. I came back and I've been able to back, go back to college, go back to part-time work. And it's all as a result of daily cannabis consumption. So you, do, you don't have the ministerial order then, obviously, to, to do it, Amy? I don't. I've been refused by two pain specialists and I'm waiting on a third, which I'm hoping is going to be the lucky one. But again, if I had, if, if my GP was able to do that, he has seen the difference in me. He has witnessed me come off all opioids, which had horrendous side effects, which makes me laugh. I don't know how they managed to get into the HPRA regulations and be approved mm -hmm. because the side but effects are sometimes more relentless than the symptoms to begin with. So, you, so your point in all of this is that you, you want to be, you basically want to either get access to the, the medical cannabis, to the access program or to get the ministerial order. And at the moment, under the qualifying criteria, you don't qualify, basically. And to be honest, neither one of those would actually be helpful for me because the restricted amount of products available through the program is not of use to me. Okay. I have very different symptoms, which requires different variants of cannabis. So sometimes it's extract, sometimes it's edible, sometimes it's flour. It's very different. And what we have available here through the MCAP program is not even a drop in the ocean of what's actually available out there okay. and what's proven to be medicinally helpful. Let, let me bring in um, is Peter Reynolds as well, who's the chair of um, the, the Ireland. This is the working group of uh, the Cannabis Industry Council. Um, Peter, you've been listening to Pam and, uh, and Amy and also uh, Dr. Smith there. I mean, do you agree with Pam in the sense that there should be a major ho overhaul of the laws at the moment or... Oh, yes, yes, I mean, I mean, I mean let, let's be clear now. I mean, I, I was at the event yesterday and it was a very dignified and professional meeting, which is in sharp contrast to the way that the government um, is treating people. So what needs depressed. to happen then? What needs to happen is, that, I mean, it's correct that GPs should be able to prescribe because cannabis is a medicine that, 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 that is not, it's not suitable for consultants to prescribe because it's about treating the whole person. Consultants are very much focused on disease. They're not focused on people, whereas for GPs, it's the other way around. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised to hear what Dr. Smith just said, because he, of course, is one of the five doctors who was engaged in this secretive lobbying of the drugs minister. Oh, well, I don't, you can't, hang on a second, you, Peter, you can't, you, you can't say that. I mean, to be like, Dr. Smith is a reputable consultant, child and adolescent psychiatrist who's on the programme to share his, his expertise and opinion with us today, which he's fully, fully entitled to do so. Of course but, is, Yeah, of course, but can, can I just but, get, but, but, can I just get a final point, fact. can I just get an, yeah. a, fi a final point, though, yeah. though, from you about, um, so what do you want the, the HSE or the health minister to do, to do about this with the medical access program where we're at at the minute? Well, I think what they should be doing is rapidly, is vastly expanding the range of conditions. I mean, chronic pain is most obvious, you know. The chronic, the chronic pain market is enormous, and 60% of all the medicinal cannabis in the world is used for chronic pain. And yes, Ireland has decided, principally because of the lobbying of doctors like Dr. Smith. Hang on a second. Listen, included. Peter, listen, you're, like, you're, you're here to give your view today on the programme as somebody from the, the industry council or the, the working group, I suppose, in, in all of this. And like, you know what I mean? You, you can leave the personal view, to, if you don't mind, to, to one side. No, my, 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 my knowledge is that... Is that okay, I take, I, I take your point. I take your Irish point, but Peter. Just, so you want, the, you want the, the HSE, the you want the HSE in the Department of Health too? What is it? I just, if you can just repeat it, what do you well, want? They, the need, they, need, they need to expand the list of conditions for which medical cannabis can be prescribed. Okay, so you want the expansion? They need, they, they need to allow GPs to prescribe it. But the reason the HSE 
and, and the Department of Health isn't doing this, is because the Irish medical profession is light years behind the rest of the Western world. The Medical Cannabis Access Programme, believe me, is a policy designed to fail. It places Ireland one notch above Russia in terms of, its, uh, in terms of our access to medicinal okay. cannabis. Um, um, it's, it's a scandalous failure for patients. Right. No, listen, I, I mean, I, I've been listening to, to, to Pam, you know, today there in, in talking about Ryan. Um, I can tell from the text line today, it was the big question that a lot of our listeners are wondering is how you can manage to get this ministerial order and yet, you know, you can't then qualify for the, the medical access cannabis program. I think a lot of people probably thought that if you qualify for one, you then in turn would qualify for the second. But anyway, lunchtime live at newstalk.com. That's the email address if you do want to get in touch with us here on the show. Um, my thanks to all of you for getting in touch with us. Peter Reynolds, um, also Pam, Amy, and too, to uh, Dr. Bobby Smith for your time on the program. Though still to come in a few moments' time, um, you will have heard the story on Monday.